So offensively, you know, not having Joe, how much did that trickle down from just not having his production, but just also impacting the way they kind of defended you guys overall? Yeah, Tom, overall, you know, when you don't have all the components of your card, it puts uh, stress on different uh, parts. And that was the, uh, the result tonight. Uh, just put extra stress on different individuals to make plays that uh, they might not have had to make if Joe was here. Brian? I'm curious, was uh, one of the worst victims of that, Jared, was that the way that they defended him, that he didn't get a single shot, or was that just the nature of the way you guys were game planning? No, I think overall, Brian, I think that the game just unfolded that way. We even got to a point where we ran uh, after timeout play for him. He got fouled on it, so we were definitely trying to keep him involved. Uh, you know, he was really on the glass for us tonight. They did a good job of keeping him off. The rebounds that he got offensively, he ended up passing those out. Uh, we didn't get him the ball in the half roll a little bit, uh, and that's uh, Gasol's minutes matching up with his probably was a, a, a emphasis of that. Um, but overall, not part of the game plan not to get him, but to get the ball to him. But it was a part of our game plan to shoot 53s. Christian? Hey, Coach, uh, tonight's result, was, was it a, a was it a byproduct of anything the Raptors did specifically, schematically, or is that just they've got so many different options out there that they can just get you in any way? Yeah, Christian, I don't think there's anything, uh, you know, tactically or schematically that uh, caught us off guard or anything. Uh, I think they really came out with uh, force and trying to send a message early. Uh, I like the way our guys continue to uh, uh, rally and get back in the ball game. Uh, but nothing tactically that uh, we hadn't seen before. Greg? Uh, Jacques, uh, you know, obviously you're at a severe manpower shortage, and this has to be a little demoralizing. What kind of uh, message do you try to give them going forward to game four? Yeah, Greg, I, I think the message leaving the locker room is, uh, you know, as a net, you have a standard. A standard is a standard. And so we'll... Uh, put on our compete uh, ability and be ready for the next game. Uh, the fortunate part is we do have a next game, and uh, that's the challenge for us is to win that. Alex? Hey, Jacques, just what do you think of Tyler's game, you know, career high in the playoffs room, especially given you needed him to step up without Joe? Yeah, really stepped into the role, uh, Alex, uh, provide some offense for us. Uh, we, we, need every, we needed everyone to uh, have his uh, field goal percentage tonight to give us a chance. Uh, but he, he did a good job of filling in. You know, he really gives you the, the luxury of, of having a basketball in his hands and not having it in his hands. Um, we, we inserted him into the lineup thinking that he would get some shots to make because Karras would have the ball in his hands. So uh, great to see him have some success. Brian Mahoney. Hey, Jock, obviously 3 nothing in the NBA has been, in the best of circumstances, impossible. No one's ever done it. Uh, when you factor in now the bodies being out and the situation of it, um, you know, how challenging is it just to even make yourself want to play in a couple days, uh, knowing that how much has gone against you for the last four or five weeks? Yeah, Brian, that's a great challenge. And uh, I hope our group accepts that challenge. Uh, you know, this is an uh, unprecedented time. I didn't think I would be talking to you through uh, a video cam with a mask on. And so uh, I hope our group embraces the now, the moment that they're in. We don't know what this thing's going to look like a month, a year, two years from now. So uh, you have moments in your life that you can hold on to. We can embrace this time, and you never know what happens if you win one game.